just before we start, and that is uh, our sages teach us that the idea of burying a child has multiple meaning. One is the classic, you know, physical, the mommy gives birth to the baby, but it can also be a Rebbe with his students. He births their souls to new levels. It could be somebody who saves a life and therefore has brought that life back into this yeah. world. So I think that when we talk later about this idea of children, we got to show that it doesn't just mean biological children because a lot of people don't have that situation in their lives, but they can still birth. All right, all right, good. Yeah. I, I have a thought, I'll t but I'll tell you later. Okay, Save we get started. Later. Just tell us when you're ready. We'll okay. get... <clears throat> oh, somebody's phone Pizza is ringing. Man. That's a good ring. We are on When the Land Sings, and we want to welcome back here, Yehuda Katz, and uh, it's great to be back with you, and uh, today we're going to be really focusing on what teaching? We're going to talk about blessings. Mm. Blessing who? Well, in this... In this very specific sense, we're talking about blessing children. Mm. However, truth be told, we can bless each other. Mm. You know, somehow people have uh, become under the impression over the years that I need to be a very special, high, honored human being in order to give somebody else a blessing. Mm. But the truth is that in our tradition, we have many opportunities to bless each other. What would you say is the difference between... Uh, blessing a person as opposed to praying for a person? When I'm praying for a person, I'm praying for that person to receive God's blessing. Mm -hmm. When I bless you, it's right in that moment. It, it offers me a way to connect with you face to face, heart to heart, right there. Mm. But when you pray to God for that person, is there hang time? I don't know. <laughs> I, haven't, I, have, I haven't been in that sphere yet. <laughs> but I do know one thing, that if I say a blessing, then you can answer to that blessing and say, Amen, Amen. Right. And not only that, if the blessing is living, I can bounce it back to you and say, Cain Lamar, to you as well. Ah, very nice. Keep it going. Right. Did you know, by the way, that the word in Hebrew, Amen, as is an acronym. A woman, yes. It's an acronym, yeah. It's an acronym for... <laughs> Aleph, El, Mem, Melech, God, the King, Ne'eman, who we believe in, the one to believe. Mm. So if I make a blessing and then you answer, Amen, we now are partners. We're coming back to that old Klal idea. We're one and the same. We're together on this path. Wow. In fact, you know, the Talmud says... <clears throat> that a person who answers amen is actually on a greater level than one who makes the blessing. Why is that? Because the person, let's say I take a piece of fruit, I have to make a blessing. I'm, otherwise, I'm stealing from God if I don't bless for, for the food. But when you say amen, hearing my blessing, you're not getting any pleasure. You're not eating the fruit. So yours is more altruistic than mine. When you say that it's an acronym and it, it has this meaning of uh, God, who is the trustworthy king, why does that associate with the word amen? I mean, because if you're making a blessing and you're and you're and you're invoking God's name, mm -hmm. so by my answering amen or I agree or I I reaffirm that, I'm saying also yes, you're blessing it to say God's name, to say thanks to God, and I'm coming in on that idea in my life as well. Mm. Would you say that uh, having a blessing consciousness? is some kind of a way of like doing like time out, sort of like remembering, you know, like, even, like sometimes we do time out with our family, we call it Shabbat, and that brings blessing. I mean, how do you see that? Well, um, on Friday nights at the Shabbat table, before we begin to eat, we have a tradition to bless our children, mm. one at a time with the blessing with the words of the priestly blessing, which well, as are... Well, as a priest, as a Kohen yourself, you right. probably know this well. Right. So we say, God should bless you and watch over you. Watch over you in the sense of have everything that you need. 
then I say, Ya'er Avonai Pana Ve'lecha Vichuneka. Okay, the Baal Shem Tov says, you have everything that you need? Okay, now you're ready to receive spiritual blessing. Let the light of God's countenance shine upon you and give you grace, because now you can appreciate it. And then, Yisa Adonai Panave Lecha, lift up God's countenance, God's face, for the whole world to see. Let it shine on you. And then, Viasem Lecha Shalom. And then he will give you peace. Mm. In order for there to be peace between us, we need to have at least one nekuda, one concept of life that we agree on. Everything else, maybe we could disagree. Mm. But in this case, the blessing is that I know where all of the blessing is coming from. Very nice. And I'm going to trust that you have a song for us that will kind of tie this together. Indeed, this is a song that came down to <clears throat> me 32 years ago. Wow. When my daughter Rivka was born. Wow. And Wave I was, tov. Yeah, I was walking. I, I, <clears throat> I remember that I, I went to the synagogue in the morning. And uh, at the reading of the Torah, I had the honor to give her her name, Chana Rivka. Sounds Jewish. And as I walked down, all of a sudden I heard this melody. And I said, oh, must be the... Uh, I, I gave her a name. I got to right away bless her. So this came down. Yisimech. Yisimech Elohim Kisara Rivka Rachel Leah. You should be, you my daughter, you my child, should have, in God's eyes, you should be in the place of our mothers, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. Very nice. So are you going to do it now? Yeah, I'm going to do that right now. All right, cool. Yisimech Elohim Kisara Rivka Sara Rivka Rachel Vileya Simbech Elohim Kisara Rivka Sara Rivka Rachel Vileya
to the segment, and we're going to learn this little piece here about blessings, since that's what we've been talking about here. So I'll just share a little bit, and then we can sort of see where it brings us to. I'm seeing here something uh, in, the, in this, which ties into the idea of blessing, that there are three words which actually share the same root of blessing. There's blessing, there is the word for the person's knee, which in Hebrew is... Berach. And then there is a word for a water pool, which is a... Brecha. A brecha, and they're all spelled the same. Correct. And the idea is as follows, that the brecha as a pool of water means that there is life, there is potential. But similar to the way you pump water out of a well, so a person has to, as a, as a kind of a human well, they have to bend their knee. They have to make themselves humble to where it's coming from. And by doing that, it pulls the spiritual water out mm. of the pool, and that is the blessing. That's how the three things to receive blessing, it's already innately there. But how do you access it? Through humbling by being, you know, humble in the face of the one to whom gives you the blessings. Beautiful. Speaking about blessing and talking to our audience, you've already translated this song and its words into English, but maybe you'll pick up your guitar and teach the people a little of the song? Sure. Cool. Yivarechcha <laughs> Hashem Vish Berecha Yae Hashem Panav Elecha Vichuneka Yivarechcha Hashem Vish Berecha Yae Hashem Panav Elecha Vichuneka Hashem, Shalom, ten shalom. 